Cool. How are you guys? Good. 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 Yeah. So, you know, I, I first want to start off with just kind of going over, you know, the, the backstory of, of Missy and then we'll move from that into the, into the present moment. So if you guys want to start wherever you feel you would like to, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just, uh, my dad was super unhealthy for about 20 years with, uh, he had the thickest medical record from the people that handle the medical records at St. Charles Hospital in Bend. Uh, they told me that. And uh, he said he had about two, three heart attacks, a couple strokes, pacemaker, triple bypass, uh, brain aneurysm. Uh, he was on a medication that was recalled later that actually made his heart enlarge called Biox. Uh, very, very unhealthy person. And his dogs were always his. Uh, well, even before he was sick, his dogs were always like one of the most important things. And uh, so his last dog passed away, great dog. And uh, so he went down to the Humane Society, rescued puppy. And that dog was pretty much his whole life and his whole focus. Uh, he probably shouldn't have got a, an Aussie for their energy levels and his ability to handle that. And one of his last things he, he said to me was he was worried that he did more harm than good. Uh, by rescuing her from the humane side, and I was like, "Dad, don't worry about it. We're gonna—I'm gonna take care of her, and uh, we're gonna get this done." He was very concerned. as one of his last thoughts. And uh, yeah, and we, uh, the family, naturally, we, we had her surrender to the humane society, and within a couple of days, Alexia just decided on her own whim to call the humane society to check in. Uh, and they were gonna put her down within like the next day. And I gave us kind of an act to that terrible situation, which, yeah, it just would have been dishonoring to his memory kind of thing. Yeah. So very yeah. lucky that she decided to do all this. Yeah, and and, and so, so once once uh, you had you had called, uh, that's when you ended up calling me. Is that is that correct? Was that? Yeah, because I, I remember we were in contact, and then I was going camping, right? Yes, yeah. and yeah. and uh, you we we tried like different options, and then I found out that she was a human society and. I don't know, I just had like a feeling something was going on. And yeah, that's when they called me and they were like, we were just about to put her down. And so that's when I called you and I was like in a panic. Um, and yeah, I think that was on a, I, I called them on a Wednesday and contacted you on the Thursday. And that's when we had that phone call together. Yeah, it was gonna be like a few hours and she was gonna be put down. Yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, it's it's awesome that you ended up reaching out um i mean the timing of that was i know amazing I, I, <laughs> if, yeah yeah and so so when 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 you first when we first talked um and uh you were you were telling me about what was going on and everything uh and I let you know that I'd like to help. Like, how did you, how did you feel about that? What were your thoughts about that first conversation we had? From my side, I was dealing with, you know, the death of the father and uh, I'm the power of attorney and the head of the estate. So for me, I was overwhelmed. Uh, so I couldn't deal with it. Uh, yeah. So Alexa uh, stepped up and she decided she was going to make that, you know, her contribution to this and, and she's going to take care of that. Um, so from my side, I, it was just like a huge relief, really, because uh, I know how important my dad's dogs are and, and how important Missy was to my dad. So from my side, it was very honoring his so. Yes, yes. And, and uh, I'm so glad that I was able to, uh, to be found. 
Um, to be honest, I mean, like, and and how how did that even come about? How were you able to to find me? I think I I literally posted in every like lost and dog, uh, lost uh, dog and found. Oh. What? Lost and found dog Facebook group. Um, because I like every time I see like there is a lost dog, I share it. Like I'm the first one to share it. Or anytime I see someone needs to we home a dog, I share it. And um, I think someone mentioned you in the con I think they, I don't know if they work directly with you or if they heard about you, but, um, and then that's how I like, contacted you. But at that point, I contacted like 10 people. I was yeah. just like, okay, solution within like 24 hours. Um, and I know, yeah, the first time you, I think, it, yeah, it was just to like book recommendation or something like that. Yeah. And, okay. and when did you get in contact with any of the other, the other people or? Uh, uh, yes, I think there were two other people that. No, two, yeah, I think two other people got back to me and they couldn't, they couldn't take her because she was labeled as aggressive. Yeah. Um, and then the other one, I think they were just like full capacity or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I find this to be pretty common that no one wants to deal with dogs that are being aggressive. And I just think that it's wild because... I mean, I think that we should understand dogs and, and aggression is a part of dogs. It's a part of us. Like there's a reason for it. And, and I find that right, like right after you, I, uh, you got in contact with me, someone else had a similar kind of story where, you know, same idea, like the shelter was going to. Uh, kill their dog, but they couldn't keep it, and 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 they called. They said they called over two hundred people. Oh wow! Yeah, and so so when you know we got, I got back from camping with. I had reached out to you, and I was like, "Hey, like, you still do you still have Missy?" And then you had said, "No, she's at the shelter," and and we're pretty much like fingers crossed, you know, mm -hmm. and. And then, you know, I was, I was kind of bummed out because I thought, man, those things typically don't work out. They don't know what they're doing. Um, yeah. They don't give, they don't, they don't understand what the dog's going through. They can't provide uh, the dogs with what they, what they truly need. And often they blame the environment and, but they're, we're the one that creates the environment in the shelter, yeah. you know? So, so when when you heard that I could, I could do this for, uh, for you and, and, and we started looking at, okay, well, I mean, we're kind of on a time clock here, right? What, what was, what were the thoughts and feelings going through your head about that? Uh, my side was too, because I have to manage the estate and I got two brothers. So there's only a certain amount of money I got to deal with. And, I was worried about price and, and, and payment, honestly, but yeah. at the same time, uh, worried about what, it's not my money. It's to me, it's my dad's money. It's like, what would my dad want? My dad, and what do I want? You know, I don't want to see this dog put down. I want to prosper and have a great life. But I know my dad specifically, like he, he would be thrilled to know that she's now with you, not in the shelter and that she's being social you know, getting trained and uh, hopefully can have a great life. So that's yeah. the most important thing. So. Yeah. And, and to me, I'm honored to be able to be a part of this story, like to be able to honor your father and, and to help you guys out. Um, because I can only imagine if we didn't come in contact and then they went through it, like how heavy that would would probably yeah. sit on you guys. Oh, 100%. 100%. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, was and, more, I was more trying to like avoidance aspect of uh, the, the five steps or whatever it is of grievance. Yeah. She was proactive. 
uh, dealing with Missy. And I, I remember Tree was like, well, what hap what's going to happen? Because, you know, we, I think, so I called you on that Thursday and I told him and I was so hopeful and excited. And, it, and then I remember it was like, well, what if something happened tonight? And they put me down. I remember like thinking, yeah, what if something happened and then that doesn't go through? Or what, what happened, like if you come get her and then something happened at that time? Like, I, I didn't want to be like too hopeful, but I, I was. And Josh is more realistic than I am. <laughs> like, I'm a bit. <laughs> so, yeah, I was just really hopeful. And I remember I was in my class, so I called you and I was excited that I was crying like so hard that day because I was so relieved because. Literally, I was trying everything possible. Um, but yeah, I think we were just like very thankful yeah. that we had, had found you. Yeah, and I was more like, well, let's wait and see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then, I, that's, a, that's a very common uh, feeling. Like the, the dog after you that ended up uh, getting pulled out of the shelter and brought to me, uh, <laughs> they text me on the drive and they're like, I'm really worried that what if she's aggressive to you? Because like no one, everybody bails once the dog is uh has been aggressive to them and i said yeah. don't worry i'm like like i this is my specialty like i deal with this like it's <laughs> not gonna happen um and they're like was, oh by uh yeah i forgot by, to tell you that by the the shoots county sheriffs when they came and got my dad finally out of his house and put him in uh, um the hospice center um the hospice house uh, it, two days or a day before he passed. Um, yeah, the Deschutes County Sheriff had to pull a taser on her and they were oh, within, wow. I mean, finger on the trigger, like one step away from pulling the taser on her uh, before she veered the other way at the last second. Like they, like they said that like, she was about to be done. Yeah, wow. Like so. that's amazing. Um, you know, especially like to me, I've been bringing people in, um, and I've had I've had no issues uh, bringing people into the home. Um, I mean, she definitely like when it comes to handling and stuff. Uh, like she was she was all matted up in the back end, and 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 so she wasn't a big fan of <laughs> of me touching and handling her. Uh, but I've got the muzzle on her, and then I just I'm like I have to. I have to do this first. And then, uh, yeah, she now is at this point where I can call her over and rub her up and, 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 and I'm just taking it really slow on the handling her, just building up the relationship. I, I got the, what I needed to get done. And so now it's just, uh, letting it just organically unfold. But yeah, hearing that they almost had to taser her is, uh, is quite quite the story <laughs> i mean and yeah. so luckily like luckily that didn't take place because she actually she's a really good dog i just think a lot of times we what we've been taught is to look at dogs through a pet lens and and that's something we're placing on to the dog and we need to understand them by nature first a dog perspective and then we can see what kind of pet we have and how that can really be done um but but yeah the the fact that it, it just seems like a miracle really <laughs> that yeah. that everything the way that it all <laughs> unfolded it's amazing um and just a picture and, that you the, yeah the pictures uh that you sent us like literally like two days later or the next day or the same day I don't no know. the same day when you yeah. were in the car with her My entire was in the yeah. back our yeah. family uh, we, we couldn't be in the house with her yeah uh, i've never met a dog where i couldn't be in the room and uh that was the one and she yeah. tried to bite my brother um who was great with dogs as well and uh could not believe i shared the photos me and everyone was like holy crap <laughs> that was crazy. That, that, <laughs> that's awesome by doing this yeah and and that's that's what i mean by when we understand the dog where they're coming from and what's going on. Like the relationship can, it can develop relatively quickly. Um, some, like, like I said, the touching and stuff, I'm taking my time. Um, because it's not, it, at first it was a priority. Cause it's like, 
I need to, I need to get these things cleaned up on you and, and it, it'll make her a lot more comfortable. And then, and then, and then when I saw that, I thought, yeah, this definitely seems like a dog that hasn't been touched. It won't allow people to touch her. That's the only Just reason these things get that bad, you know, where it's like matted like that. Yeah, just my dad is the only one that would ever touch her. Yeah, she exactly. For however long she's been alive. Three, four yeah. years. Yeah. And so <laughs> yeah, I find I find that uh it's it's something that that I'm really wanting people to understand more, especially for these type of situations, and that's why I'm so thankful that you guys wanted to uh, have this conversation because because it's really important um, for people to hear from other people just other than just the guy that's saying hey I can I can I can help it's it's very helpful for people to go oh okay I can relate to that story and oh I heard other people that were saying um, these positive things and so once we we had the, we were on the phone and we decided that we're gonna go through with this I was like hey you need to like they're gonna get closed soon so let's hang up give them a call so that we can figure this out right and so so when you when you called the shelter and you talked to them what what was that like oh, yeah i'll let you go about it i think i i think they were like i thought they would be more surprised but they, i don't think they really were i think they were like just like yeah. okay i mean the the first thing they asked was like who's gonna take her and then that's when i bought you uh bought your name up but then for me i was like yeah just thrilled i i think i was not realizing what was happening at that moment i was just like yeah, we we had very negative experiences uh between me and my brother and my mom talking to the shelter oh, yeah. in the first place very negative uh experiences <laughs> with them how so um Originally, I called to talk about needing to surrender a dog because my dad passed, and uh, they were they were very negative about it um, to the point where um, I had to, I let this person talk to me uh, disrespectfully, honestly. And at the end of it, I just I just said, "Hey, I need you to calm down, and and then let me tell you my story. My dad passed away two days ago." This is our situation. We have a dog that we have to surrender. And they did apologize a bunch, but it, they were very disrespectful, honestly. I was, I was surprised. I, and I know they deal with a lot. And I know they deal with a lot of animals and stuff like that. But I was just surprised by their their attitudes and their just disrespect to the story. And, and just telling me, like, well, we're full. And, and then I'm or, and they're also, I'm like, well, I need to surrender her on a Sunday. And they're like, well, we don't do surrender Sunday. I'm like, I live across the state. Like, this is the only day I can do it. Yeah. And, uh, they, yeah, they were, and my brother came, uh, circumstances with them. And very shocking, honestly. But I was, I was very disappointed in, in their behavior. Yeah. You would, you know, to me, I think most people think that, like, oh, I'm going to contact a shelter and they're going to be like, oh, yeah. Like we can, we can do this, but it's often, especially, um, if the dog is known to have behavioral problems, it's like, you're trying to like jump through hoops and often they'll deny you. Um, and, and I do find that from my experience, people have a lot of mixed feelings about the shelter and, and the kind of service and treatment they get. And so, yeah. Is trying to jump on the cart and just having a hard time. <laughs> That's <laughs> fine. Uh, but, but yeah, I'm sorry to hear about that that experience. And th again, that's what makes it this even even better because it's like it just seems like such a low low, and yeah, and then for for it to turn around and and so when. When you were telling that, okay, we have this person. They wanted to know who I was, and did, were they a little bit? Were they a little bit like, who, who wants to come get this dog? Yeah, exactly. It's only like they were very. I mean, they were 
very like cold about it, but also like, yeah, who would want to take her? Um, yeah. And I think you mentioned when you picked her up, they knew your name or something like yeah, that. Yeah, well, right? they, yeah, they looked me, they looked me up online. And so it's funny because I, I showed up and I'm standing waiting to be helped. And, and this woman off to the side says, Hey, can I help you? And I turn and look at her and she's like, Oh, are you here for Missy? And oh. I was like, how do they, how do they know me? You know, I, I'm thinking, how do they know me? And, mm -hmm. and then she, she said, you know, I've been stalking you on your website and stuff. And, and I went, Oh, all right. And I thought, well, this will be interesting to see if they're going to allow me to take her or not, because the dog world is very, it's very divided. Um, uh, the shelters typically have this ideology that it's about positive reinforcement only and, and, and so they really don't like um, dogs going to people that don't uh, subscribe to that uh, belief system. And this is where I, I was already in my head thinking, well, if they ask me what the approach is going to be, because I'm sure they're going to ask. And they did. And I said, well, first, we, I have to evaluate Missy. Like, how am I going to tell you how I'm going to go about it if I don't even, I don't even know the dog, you know? Yeah. And she's like, she's like, well, that actually, that makes a lot of sense. And she, <laughs> you know, and, and so then she, she's like, well, I'm going to have to have you sign this paperwork. And I'm like, all right. And so I'm signing the paperwork. And she then says, so what's like the process going to be like? And I said, well, the first step is to get her out of here and then uh, see what's going on with her. And she's like, well, are you going to keep her? Or, and I said, I said, the plan is to evaluate her, figure out what's going on, and then we're going from there. And, yeah. and she's, she's like, oh, okay. And signed the paperwork. And then she went and got her, handed her over to me, and left, loaded her up, and then – you saw the, the, the videos of when I brought her in and then, and then I introduced her to uh, uh, some dogs. And next thing you know, she's with, I think, I think there's at least nine or ten other dogs. Like, there's quite a few dogs. Uh, and I had her with everyone the first day and she was playing. And, and so when you saw those videos and you saw the pic, like, I know that you were commenting about the pictures, but. I'm curious about how did the videos make you guys feel? Oh, I could not believe it. I, I was at work when you sent me those pictures and I showed all my colleagues and they were like, is that the same dog <laughs> that you were mentioning before? And I was like, yeah. like I sent you the video. You sent a video I, or a picture, I think, of her just sitting in the backseat of your car as you're driving. Me yeah. and my brother were like, that's a brave <laughs> I would I would have I I gotten bit, is my belief. And then I sent yeah. you the picture of playing with other dogs, and she didn't have a muzzle. Yeah. No, yeah, no muzzle playing. You just on. I think there was one video of you sitting on the porch or something, and she's just yeah next to me. She looked, yeah, right behind me. Like like hot, kind of hot from running around, and playing and stuff, and she just kind of lays in the shade of one of them. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I was like, that, that dog just needed a fenced yard or something, and and some stim. Yeah, I think I think really. What happens is we, we often interfere with the dog too much and our love, our love for the dog and how we go about it um, through the way we share affection, through the way we do toys and games, like it can create um, problems. And so the, the benefit of going into a new environment, um, well, it can, it can put them a little bit into some uh, survival mode where where they're not as potentially as bold as they would be um, yeah. in their home, where all this stuff was taking place, the, emboldening them. It, it's like having like a spoiled child, you know. If you if you if you spoil them, and and I think that's what she seems like is that she comes from a very <laughs> spoiled background. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yes. Oh yeah. She had many toys, many bones. Yeah. The only thing she had was a fence yard to run yeah and yeah so I, yeah and being just couldn't get her exercise and i think they just drove her crazy yeah you know, I, I yeah i definitely think that that 
it once once she came here and I just thinking from that dog perspective and and then it allows for it to unfold. And I put her first with dogs that I knew if she had a problem with uh, the dogs approaching or whatever, they would they would want to back off and they wouldn't want a problem. And then I worked up to dogs that I'm like, look, if you want to give this dog an attitude, <laughs> you, you, you might, you might, uh, they say F around and find out. But, yeah. but I, I started seeing that like she, she actually was, at first I wasn't going to put her with dogs right away. I was like, I'm going to let her get used to me. Um, and then later in the day, I'm going to put her with some dogs. But she ended up in the bus where I had a couple of the dogs and she, the way she was looking and acting, I thought, I'm going to do this right now. I mean, I looking at how she's responding, it seems like she's going to, she's going to be social. And so opened up the gate, boom, they get together. And then she did the little play, uh, b little bounce and everything. And I thought, all right, like, here we go. And, and yeah, I mean, she played her, her heart out. That might be the first time she's ever played with another dog in her entire. That's life. amazing. She, like she, I'm almost. Yeah, she, she, uh, my dog Cora, who was like the one of the first dogs that she met. They're best friends. Um, they just like they're taking a break right now. They're they're but they every like every morning they're roughhousing like no other. And then throughout the day, like so if it's real hot, they'll, they'll kind of lounge around, um, a lot more, but, um, evening time comes around, they eat and then they want to go outside and rough house until I tell them like, it's time for bed. And <laughs> <laughs> like, so she, she has a blast with Cora. Um, she plays with a lot of the other dogs that come to, but Cora's her BFF. And, and I just think that awesome. it's so cool. And then, like I said, that there's other, uh, there's so many dogs that have come through. There's people, my clients are coming in and I have not, I, I haven't even, I haven't even muzzled her, um, uh, in those situations. I did right at the beginning. Once I put like, I did like grooming and I kept it on, uh, to, cause I'm like, well, it's already on. So let me, I'm going to keep it on. And, and then I'll see these people. And then I went, okay, this is this, I'm going to take it off and, and yeah, haven't put it back, uh, uh, on, but my, my girlfriend, uh, so I went, I, I, uh, was at an evening job and I get home and Missy's wearing uh, a muzzle and I go to my girlfriend and I said, you put the muzzle on Missy? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, well, that's pretty awesome because she definitely did not want me to come near her when I like to go touch her and stuff. So putting the muzzle on, it took like 40 minutes um, to be able to, to get it on. My girlfriend just got home. She lets out the dog. She puts the muzzle <laughs> the muzzles on for safety while because she's learning so so we muzzle yeah. the dog like the dogs when when she's there by herself and but i forgot i totally forgot to tell her like don't uh uh don't even bother with that um but but yeah i i was very very pleased and so then i thought i'm gonna i'm gonna look at doing that to say because i thought well maybe with females uh mm -hmm. she feels more comfortable with you know because because sometimes like uh guys will rough house with the dogs and all that and so they they'll get have more of this edge with them um there's lots of other reasons but but i i went and i put the muzzle on no problem um that next day and so i can she's she's way more tolerant of of being touched and handled I, I still haven't looked to um, like look to brush her anymore. Uh, uh, I had cut her nails down and everything the first that that uh, that first day, but 
but yeah, I, how I how I see things unfolding has been wonderful. And do you feel that throughout the process, I've I've kept you guys in the loop uh, plenty enough? Do uh, you feel? Yeah, so I, I think after the first month, uh, I mean, most of your contact in Alexia, but she's sending me all the photos, and I mean, you can just tell that she's happy. So once I knew that she was happy, I was like, oh, yeah. she's being she's <laughs> if she's acting like that, then she's gonna wherever she's at. I don't need to even know anymore. She's good. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. I, I want to know. Yeah, I, I've I've tried to send like little little things here and there, you know, but honestly, for me, time just, it flies by. Um, you just get into the, the day to day stuff. And, and then next thing you know, you're like, Oh, I haven't, I haven't touched base for a couple weeks or so. <laughs> That's how it feels. And, and so then look to send you some picture or some video, but yeah, she, she's been having a blast. Um, I, I think her life has opened way up. I mean, especially yeah. it was going to end. And so it's beyond opened up from that. And then, yeah. and, and then what I wanted to, you know, I've been waiting uh, to, to have this to be able to tell you guys, but I do have someone that is interested in her. Um, and, and so it's fantastic that, but, but what I think we should do is we should, we should look at extending at least another month of like thinking like, Hey, she's going to be here another month uh, so that we can, cause she, this person's in the middle of moving. It's a client of mine. She's in the middle of moving. Okay. And I think that it's best to like let her move and like, let's see kind of where she's at and, and not try to put a bunch of new things together at once and, and make sure that she's, she's like in the fit. But I think that it's awesome to have, um someone that's really interested in her and and so yeah what are your thoughts and stuff on that i mean i think that's something i want to talk to you about originally it was like a timeline um i was worried originally for my I, i've only had a few interactions with her and none of them were positive um yeah. for the most part uh, so i was like man this is going to take a while and then you send me like the photos and videos I'm like, oh, this is like three, four. This is what he does. Like this is three, four months. You just got to find the right situation. Yeah. No, uh, yeah, I think you know another month to get her in, a, not and, you know even two just to get her in the right home with proper training and you know. Yeah. If 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 this person, if my client uh, lines out, I just want her to. She's been coming. Um, she's been trying to get here at least once a week. Um, get around her with one of her other dogs. We'll look at introducing the other dog she has um, to, but I just want to make sure that, you know, it's, it's solid. I don't like the place a dog and then they come back kind of thing. Uh, when I was helping out at a local shelter, uh, they were upset at me because I would prolong the process, the adoption process, especially with challenging dogs. Um, I, but it's like, if you can actually take the time, find the right person that's committed to like coming in and doing this, the mo most likely the dog won't come back. And then, yeah. and then you can help them in home. Uh, so if anything, cause I always expect things are going to come up. Like I do this every day and I still don't know everything. And so you're going to, you're going to expect some problems are going to arise and you're going to have to help them problem solve. But so what yeah. we're doing is, is looking at this, like, when she first was interested, I said, well, we'll see. Um, cause it was pretty, it was probably like two or three weeks into things. And so I thought we'll see, um, where we, where we end up and if that's a good fit. But, but I do think that it's definitely worth, uh, pursuing and, and lining out. And I just wanted to talk to you about like, Hey, I'm thinking at least extend another month and then, and then, see where she's at and then potentially like it. So if she, it is a green light, then I would probably recommend maybe even another month where, uh, it's more integrated into, uh, the process of, uh, putting her into that home. But, but 
I, I, I don't, I don't foresee why this wouldn't work, um, work out. Um, and then what's nice is that she's a very committed client to like, she's, she, uh, comes to the, I have a, uh, I meet up, uh, twice a month with my clients. It's like a, right now it's a free meetup and, and clients can come and hang out and bring their dogs. And sometimes we go hiking together. Sometimes we're just socializing in backyards and stuff. And, but she, she's very involved. So what will be cool is Missy would then be part of, um, still being able to hang out with Cora and, uh, all the other dogs. So, um, she would still, it'd be like, she's still part of the family, you know? Yes. And Amazing. really the, the, the exact, dream. yeah, it's the dream. That's exactly what would, the, I never could have imagined that this could even happen. So that's perfect. Beyond perfect. 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 And I know perfect. I'm ecstatic uh, knowing that, uh, you know, she's getting socialized, having fun and possibly have an owner that could take care of her. Yeah. And, 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 family make her part of the family not just take care of her but yes and and what's what i think is just yeah it's, it, it to me what i find it's like like i have i have three dogs staying with me that would have been like missy's included in that but three dogs that would have been killed by the shelter and yeah. and and it's wild because the the shelters um aren't open-minded to to solving these things. I, I, I think yeah. that really at the end of the day, people like to do what they want to do. They want to make it as easy as possible for themselves. And then they can generate money. They can get a pat on their back for say, Oh, all the, the great work you do saving animals. But then the ones that, you know, really need to be understood, not killed. Um, what about those dogs? And so I, I, I get attached, um, to these dogs. And, and so, placing them becomes very very important to me and yeah. and i always have this thing of like look if it doesn't work out you do not take this dog to the shelter like you bring it back to me and and then we'll we would go at it again but but yeah i missy's one of those dogs like i wish i had i wish i had the setup like a shelter where i had all the kennel because i could i could help out a lot more um and ultimately my vision is that i want to be able to help the what they say no kill shelters are 90 percent save rate 10 percent euthanasia and so i want to be for the 10 percent and i want to have a, a like a shelter a rescue that's for the 10 percent and then they come to me and then i work with them and then they help my private clients with their dogs not end up in this type of situation and then and so even if they don't ever find a home they have a purpose they have a wonderful life um and and so to me this is like i just feel like when you reached out i'm like oh my gosh it seems like this this door's opening to like putting my foot back in that door because i thought when i was at one of the local shelters that oh my gosh it's going to happen, but people didn't want to make the changes. They wanted to do what they wanted to do. And it became this internal conflict that no one wanted to take leadership and do what was best for, for dogs. They will go, well, I want to walk the dogs however and whenever I want. I want to do interact with the dogs however I want. And, and so to me, I, I just feel honored that I can uh, help with you and your family, honor your dad. Um, I, I feel so thankful that you guys trusted, uh, this person that you really, you didn't know, and you just <laughs> yeah. took a leap, leap of faith that I was gonna, I was actually going to be able to help and provide her with a better life because when it, it's like, we care about these animals and we do want the best and, and it's hard to put your trust into, are people going to be able to actually help? And, and that's how I feel when I'm placing dogs. I'm like, is this person, do they have it? And that's why I like extended eva uh, evaluation process of the people, because if they cannot commit to just that, how are they going to do this for the life of the dog? 
you know, they're not going to be able to do it. And so I just wanted to make sure that, you know, we were able to document the story and then I want that news of, Hey, I think we found, we found uh, a person and, and then give you that kind of game plan of, of what we're looking for, um, moving forward. But with, with all of this being said, is there anything that you, um, want to mention anything that you want to add, anything you want to ask me? I'm just mostly surprised that the shelter doesn't work with people like you, yeah. honestly. Like yeah. why, why uh, if, I don't know. I just I had, I had more trust within the animal shelters before this. I just assumed that you, you're the guy they would call, you know, before. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It used to, it used to, yeah, it used to be that way with one of the shelters that were are in the town over. And then I went, then I went into the shelter and I restructured it. I was able to put all the dogs together. I'd have all the shelter dogs together all day long. And people had a problem with me using muzzles. They would say that's abusive. People had a problem with me uh, disciplining dogs, letting them know that, hey, you can't act that way. That's inappropriate behavior. It, um, it, it's, it's wild because people have a problem with me disciplining dogs, but yet killing the dog is the ultimate discipline. That's as high a level of discipline as you can go. Death. The death penalty is by far. And so, so I, I, I just realized, like, I was a little naive going into the shelter. I was feeling like you, like, oh, like, I've helped out before. They're going to be so grateful. Some people yeah. were ecstatic. They were so grateful, so appreciative. Um, but then there was in, some people that didn't like it. But the leadership wouldn't get rid of the people that just weren't on board um, because they're worried about, oh, what if we lose donations because people uh, uh, say bad things and who cares? Let's just be transparent, put this out there and create a new a new wave. And and so I realized after this journey that the only way to make things work is I have to create my own shelter, my own rescue. And. And so then I can take the dogs from these places. And then when people hear that they were going to all kill these dogs, then I think people will start to go, wait a minute. Like, what's that person doing? Why are they yeah. able to help the dogs that they said needed to be killed? Why? And, and so this is the beginning stages. And, and this is, again, why I'm very appreciative of, of you guys and, and, again, willing to do this because – it, it helps build that into the direction ultimately that I'm looking for because it, it, it takes more than just me to make this happen because you need people that can then adopt Missy and live with her in the way they need to because if they live in the way that your dad did, she's going to have those problems, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so they cannot do that. And so when you tell people you can't live like this, you can't do that, people, a lot of people do not like being told that they have to have restrictions on their behavior. You know, yeah. it's just, it's just like when we're, we get overweight, people don't like to hear that you need to eat healthy. They want to yeah. think that they can do some kind of fad thing and maybe a pill or whatever. And it's like, no, you need to actually eat appropriately. So, so this is where the, the shelter, these systems, there's, there's some people that are really trying to do well and do good. And then, the, and then there's people that are in there for the money, the status, the, the, the power, the, the, yeah. the wrong reasons. I would not have believed it. If it yeah. wasn't for this uh, situation that happened and dealing with the humane society. I would yes. never have believed it. I would be like, no, they're, they're there. And yeah, I'm, I'm sure they are a lot of them. And, to a degree, and to a degree. Yeah, and I know they deal with a lot of hard stories, but the way I was treated was just honestly disrespectful. Yeah, that was from a man, and yes. I couldn't believe it. Yes, and and that's and that's why to me, I I think that there needs to be an alternative. You know, there needs to be an alternative. And to me, I would I would respect the shelter more if they would just say, "Look, we don't know how to deal with these dogs, and we don't know what to do here." Um, our strategy isn't ideal for this type of situation and then be open to saying, Hey, let's get this person's help. Let's actually do that. 
But when they decide to kill over getting my help, come on now. That's like, it's, it's ridiculous. Would, to me, it's like, why would they not have get, they had my number, they had my family's number. Why wouldn't they have called and been like, hey, this is our option. Yeah. If she stays here's outside, because you can contact and we'll hold off until you contact them. Yes. To, to come up with another solution, but they, they weren't going to do that. And that's no, that's they, no. And, and, and to me, this is why, like when I was at the shelter, when we say we get a dog in and it bit somebody, if I then tell them to put in the bio, like, Hey, this dog has a bite history, but we're doing really well with them. And we understand why it took place and we can help you understand what's going on and how to navigate this. People would say, no, we can't do that. That doesn't make them look good. And I'm like, it's not about looking good. It's about finding the right fit for this dog that understands that this dog is capable of biting in circumstances. And, 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 and if we don't know that, you're putting a dog in a situation that they can do this again, hurt somebody. And, and just because you signed, they signed a waiver saying that they're responsible for it now, I, it's not, it doesn't fly for me. And, and so this is, this is why when I started looking at things in this when, in the shelter, it really came down to people don't like reality. They don't like truth. They don't like to hear how it really is. And we like to f make everything fluffy and sugarcoat everything and, and twist and bend words. And, and it, it, it's, it's not ideal. But when you say that you wouldn't have believed it, this is the, one of the things that I run into where when I'm speaking from my perspective, a lot of people just think that I'm like, this is crazy that no, that's shelters aren't like this. This person just is, is out there, you know? And it's like, once you're in it and you see it and you experience it and, and, and what's funny is that the very shelter that I was at, I had, I had been let go and they still wanted to try to run my program and stuff. And then, and then, new management came in, got rid of like all the people that were actually in my mind there to really help. They get rid of everyone. And then, and then they are going to then be putting down a dog. They call me to see, cause they, they heard about me. It's new management. So they don't know me personally. They hear about me, call me. And, and I say, yeah, I can help you. I can come in and I can educate your staff. I can, I can evaluate the dog. I can then help uh, find the right fit uh, for this dog. And they say, well, no, like we, we're hoping that you could just adopt the dog. And I'm like, no, I'm not set up for that right now. I can't take the dog long term. I can assist you in this way. And they said, well, we want to be able to just exhaust all options. And I said, well, you're not exhausting all options. You're turning me yeah. down for this option. And, and they said, well, you know, the shelter environment, it's just a hard place for the dog. And, and, and it's just some dog. And I said, look, I was in that very shelter that you're talking about. And I was able to have all the dogs together. And so don't be telling me about that. The environment, like, no, you guys are creating this situation. You don't know what you're doing. And, and then you're killing them because you don't, you don't know. And, and instead of owning up and admitting this, um, and then I think a lot of times, these people have made this decision a lot. And so to have to deal with the fact if, oh, this guy could actually save them, you have to then think back to all the dogs that you killed that yeah. didn't need it. And that's a heavy burden. It's a very heavy burden. So, so it's wild. It's wild. And, and, and this is where, you know, Missy's story is going to be, um, it's going to be known. It's going to be a part of the, the blocks of, of building something that ultimately is going to be so much better than uh, what I think is out there. And not uh, people can have their role. It's like there's daycare facilities that uh, if their dog does anything assertive, dominant, or aggressive, they get kicked out. Um, yes. For me, I take those dogs. Those dogs come to my daycare. They're coming to my boarding facility. So it's like, look, you can do that, but don't be knocking me for what I do when you're kicking these dogs out and wanting to kill them um, yeah. or isolate them. Um, it, 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 it's it's what I wish would take place, but human behavior doesn't they don't it doesn't work that way. But but yeah, overall, I just 
I've, I've had such a great time uh, getting to know Missy, being, being in this um, with you guys. I have loved the fact that you guys went above and beyond um, what most people do. Yes, thank you. And because, and, and you're a part of it too, really. I mean, uh, but it, it's what I wish the shelters would do they, that they would reach out to you and not, not that you had to reach out to them. Um, that's if I, that, that's what I would do if I were in that position, like, Hey, we're feeling like we have to kill this dog. Uh, what do you guys think? Is there other options you want? Um, Thankfully, I don't have to make those decisions. Um, I figure out how to work with that dog, but but I do think that that's that's what should take place. Um, yeah. But I don't think they, they want to have those conversations. It has to be. They yeah. It really needs to be a change from the yeah yeah. Well, I I agree. Any 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 other things that you'd like to share or? That was my man. I just shopped on that. Perfect. <laughs> <Yeah>. Perfect. <laughs> I'm not telling you how mad I was about the whole situation and that I almost wanted to send them a picture. I yeah. ended up doing yeah. it. Oh, you did? You, nice. Yes. Yeah. I, I, did I, did I, I think I got back to you on that. And my, my thinking was, from my experience, I said, it's a lost cause. They're just going to yeah. say, oh, oh, it's because it, she's out of the shelter now. And it's like, get out of here. Like, I like, just wanted to so I did it. <laughs> Perfect. Like I, I do think that it, it probably can create some shifts and some some eye opening for some, but but to me, I've just seen it so many times. Like, for example, the people that believe in the po the positive only or force fear free, fear free, whatever they want to call themselves, it's the same idea. I've reached out to over seventy of these uh, these type of trainers. Uh, over social media and none of them will even talk to me but they say that like what i'm doing is is that's that's wrong dominance and hierarchy doesn't exist and and they don't want to have these conversations and and so i think it's really weird where people say that i need to change and i need to educate myself but none of them want to actually help educate me and so that's why i go I just find it a lost cause. You, it's like talking to a wall. Um, but I do find that some people are out there are probably, um, oh my gosh, my eyes are open. I've definitely seen that. But when it comes to professionals, they often are, they, they, double, they double down in a lot of ways. And when I do find professionals that are open to like getting their viewpoints uh, checked, that's why I like having conversations with people that don't agree. Because I want to, I want to find uh, holes. In, if there are there holes, or am I missing something? And so I'm, I'm glad that you did it. Um, did you, did you hear anything back? No, of course not. Yeah, yeah, I figured. <laughs> but, but it's definitely something that, um, if anything, it, it brings a, a po some positivity to their, their life. You know that they, yeah. they do get a glimpse of a success, right? But, yeah. but yeah. I, I'm hoping that, that we can get away from, from these things. Cause I do think that, I think that no kill, like it's way more possible than what we think, but I know that there are circumstances that it, it just can't find anybody. No one has the skills or ability or whatever. I get it. Um, yeah. but I do think that we need to understand that there are, there are ways, there are solutions and and this is just this is just the beginning stages i look at it as being like a pioneer where i think about the oregon trail since i you know i was born in oregon always talked about the oregon trail but when people said i'm gonna go i'm gonna go out west people were like no you're an idiot that can't be done this is blah 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 and then as more people did it it became now we have highways everybody like zips across and does these things and so i think this is where it's the beginning stages people will criticize it people will say how crazy it is and how dumb and it will never work and then and then more people will get onto it and the next thing you know we're going to have highways and it's going to be a mainstream thing and and 
but we need to radically change the way that we go about things because you know in the u.s we bring over one million dogs into the u.s every year from other countries when we're already killing the numbers are not right but you know we're killing well into the hundreds of thousands if not million uh dogs a year and so so this is where i think that if people actually looked at the real problem and under really understood it it would wake people up but people want to sell the the pet dream and buy the products and get this item and and do these things and so i i really i'm really really passionate about this and so when we look at moving forward uh we'll we'll stay in touch behind the scenes and and all that um we'll we'll talk about the the, the logistics about everything but but overall any any questions that you have for me no i think anything i had was answered so yeah fantastic yeah. fantastic cool so so uh when it comes to the the price I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll send over that to you guys and, and then you can look it over, um, agree upon it. Um, then I'll send over, I'll send over the service agreement and sign that up. And then, um, yeah, I'm thinking that, like I said, another month or so. And that's I could possibly imagine. So yeah. And as long as everything goes to plan, that's that I, I don't foresee it going over uh, two months, but we'll, we'll, we'll keep in touch. But I think yeah, has the right thing going, just getting her to the right family. That's all that really matters. So yeah, now that we, yep. can, and especially with a little bit more training, I, that's, I, I'm not too worried. Perfect. Well, I, I really appreciate your guys' time and, uh, I won't keep you any longer. And, uh, I, I do have some videos that I'll send your guys' way of her, her with her BFF and her playing with some other dogs and awesome. bring smiles to your guys' face on that end. But anyways, enjoy the rest of your evening. It was a pleasure talking to you and we'll, we'll be in touch. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you so thank much. you so much. For yeah. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Take care. Good evening. Thanks. Bye.